Hi. Welcome to Wikitube. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about NATO. But first, like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, also called the North Atlantic Alliance, is an intergovernmental military alliance between 30 member states, 28 European and 2 North American. Established in the aftermath of World War II, the organization implements the North Atlantic Treaty, which was signed in Washington, D. C. On April 4, 1949, NATO is a system of collective security. Its independent member states agree to defend each other against attacks by third parties. During the Cold War, NATO operated as a check on the perceived threat posed by the Soviet Union. The alliance remained in place after the dissolution of the Soviet Union and has been involved in military operations in the Balkans, the Middle East, South Asia, and Africa. NATO's main headquarters are located in Brussels, Belgium, while NATO's military headquarters are near Mons, Belgium. The alliance has targeted deployments of their NATO response force in Eastern Europe, and the combined militaries of all NATO members include around 3.5 million soldiers and personnel. Their combined military spending as of 2020 constituted over 57% of the global nominal total. Members have agreed that their aim is to reach or maintain the target defense spending of at least 2% of their GDP by 2024. NATO formed with 12 founding members, and has added new members eight times, most recently when North Macedonia joined the alliance in March 2020. Following the acceptance of their applications for membership in June 2022, Finland and Sweden are anticipated to become the 31st and 32nd members, with their accession protocols to the North Atlantic Treaty now in the process of being ratified by the existing members. NATO currently also recognizes Bosnia and Herzegovina Georgia, and Ukraine as aspiring members. Enlargement has led to tensions with non-member Russia, which is one of the 20 additional countries that participate in NATO's Partnership for Peace program. Another 19 countries are involved in institutionalized dialogue programs with NATO. The Treaty of Dunkirk was signed by France and the United Kingdom on March 4, 1947, during the aftermath of World War II and the start of the Cold War, as a treaty of alliance and mutual assistance in the event of possible attacks by Germany or the Soviet Union. In March 1948, this alliance was expanded in the Treaty of Brussels to include the Benelux countries, forming the Brussels Treaty Organization, commonly known as the Western Union. Talks for a wider military alliance, which could include North America, also began that month in the United States, where their foreign policy under the Truman Doctrine promoted international solidarity against actions they saw as communist aggression, such as the February 1948 coup d'état in Czechoslovakia. These talks resulted in the signature of the North Atlantic Treaty on April 4, 1949 by the member states of the Western Union plus the United States, Canada, Portugal, Italy, Norway, Denmark, and Iceland. Canadian diplomat Lester B. Pearson was a key author and drafter of the treaty. The North Atlantic Treaty was largely dormant until the Korean War initiated the establishment of NATO to implement it with an integrated military structure. This included the formation of Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe in 1951, which adopted many of the Western Union's military structures and plans, including their agreements on standardizing equipment and agreements on stationing foreign military forces in European countries. In 1952, the post of Secretary General of NATO was established as the organization's chief civilian. That year also saw the first major NATO maritime exercises, exercise main brace and the accession of Greece and Turkey to the organization. Following the London and Paris conferences, West Germany was permitted to rearm militarily, as they joined NATO in May 1955, which was, in turn, a major factor in the creation of the Soviet-dominated Warsaw Pact, delineating the two opposing sides of the Cold War. The building of the Berlin Wall in 1961 marked a height in Cold War tensions, when 400,000 U.S. troops were stationed in Europe. Doubts over the strength of the relationship between the European states and the United States ebbed and flowed, along with doubts over the credibility of the NATO defense against a prospective Soviet invasion, doubts that led to the development of the independent French nuclear deterrent and the withdrawal of France from NATO's military structure in 1966. To supplement Bulgaria's air force, Spain sent Eurofighter typhoons, the Netherlands sent eight F-35 attack aircraft, and additional French and U.S. attack aircraft would arrive soon as well. No military operations were conducted by NATO during the Cold War. The Bosnian War began in 1992, as a result of the breakup of Yugoslavia. The deteriorating situation led to United Nations Security Council Resolution 816 on October 9, 1992, ordering a no-fly zone over central Bosnia and Herzegovina, which NATO began enforcing on April 12, 1993 with Operation Deny Flight. 
From June 1993 until October 1996, Operation Sharp Guard added maritime enforcement of the arms embargo and economic sanctions against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. On February 28, 1994, NATO took its first wartime action by shooting down four Bosnian Serb aircraft violating the no-fly zone. On 10 and April 11, 1994, the United Nations Protection Force called in air strikes to protect the Gorazda safe area, resulting in the bombing of a Bosnian Serb military command outpost near Gorazda by two US F-16 jets acting under NATO direction. In retaliation, Serbs took 150 U. N personnel hostage on 14 April. On 16 April a British Sea Harrier was shot down over Gorazda by Serb forces. In August 1995, a two-week NATO bombing campaign, Operation Deliberate Force, began against the Army of the Republika Srpska, after the Srebrenica genocide. Further NATO air strikes helped bring the Yugoslav wars to an end, resulting in the Dayton Agreement in November 1995. In an effort to stop Slobodan Milosevic's Serbian-led crackdown on KLA separatists and Albanian civilians in Kosovo, the United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 1199 on September 23, 1998 to demand a ceasefire. Negotiations under U.S. Special Envoy Richard Holbrook broke down on March 23, 1999, and he handed the matter to NATO, which started a 78-day bombing campaign on March 24, 1999. Operation Allied Force targeted the military capabilities of what was then the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. During the crisis, NATO also deployed one of its international reaction forces, the ACE Mobile Force, to Albania as the Albania Force, to deliver humanitarian aid to refugees from Kosovo. Though the campaign was criticized for high civilian casualties, including bombing of the Chinese embassy in Belgrade, Milosevic finally accepted the terms of an international peace plan on June 3, 1999, ending the Kosovo War. On 11 June, Milosevic further accepted UN Resolution 1244, under the mandate of which NATO then helped establish the KFR peacekeeping force. Nearly one million refugees had fled Kosovo, and part of KFR's mandate was to protect the humanitarian missions, in addition to deterring violence. In August to September 2001, the alliance also mounted Operation Essential Harvest, a mission disarming ethnic Albanian militias in the Republic of Macedonia. The September 11 attacks in the United States caused NATO to invoke Article 5 of the NATO Charter for the first time in the organization's history. The article states that an attack on any member shall be considered to be an attack on all. The invocation was confirmed on October 4, 2001 when NATO determined that the attacks were indeed eligible under the terms of the North Atlantic Treaty. The eight official actions taken by NATO in response to the attacks included Operation Eagle Assist and Operation Active Endeavor, a naval operation in the Mediterranean Sea designed to prevent the movement of terrorists or weapons of mass destruction, and to enhance the security of shipping in general, which began on October 4, 2001. The alliance showed unity. On April 16, 2003, NATO agreed to take command of the International Security Assistance Force, which included troops from 42 countries. The decision came at the request of Germany and the Netherlands, the two nations leading ISAF at the time of the agreement, and all 19 NATO ambassadors approved it unanimously. The handover of control to NATO took place on 11 August, and marked the first time in NATO's history that it took charge of a mission outside the North Atlantic area. ISAF was initially charged with securing Kabul and surrounding areas from the Taliban, Al-Qaeda and factional warlords, so as to allow for the establishment of the Afghan Transitional Administration headed by Hamid Karzai. In October 2003, the UN Security Council authorized the expansion of the ISAF mission throughout Afghanistan, and ISAF subsequently expanded the mission in four main stages over the whole of the country. On July 31, 2006, the ISAF additionally took over military operations in the south of Afghanistan from a US-led anti-terrorism coalition. Due to the intensity of the fighting in the south, in 2011 France allowed a squadron of Mirage 2000 fighter-slash-attack aircraft to be moved into the area, to Kandahar, in order to reinforce the alliance's efforts. In August 2004, during the Iraq War, NATO formed the NATO Training Mission, Iraq, a training mission to assist the Iraqi security forces in conjunction with the US-led MNFI. The NATO Training Mission Iraq was established at the request of the Iraqi interim government under the provisions of United Nations Security Council Resolution 1546. The aim of NTMI was to assist in the development of Iraqi security forces training structures and institutions so that Iraq can build an effective and sustainable capability that addresses the needs of the nation. NTMI was not a combat mission but is a distinct mission, under the political control of the North Atlantic Council. Its operational emphasis was on training and mentoring. 
The activities of the mission were coordinated with Iraqi authorities and the U.S.-led Deputy Commanding General Advising and Training, who was also dual-hatted as the commander of NTMI. The mission officially concluded on December 17, 2011. Beginning on August 17, 2009, NATO deployed warships in an operation to protect maritime traffic in the Gulf of Aden and the Indian Ocean from Somali pirates, and help strengthen the navies and coast guards of regional states. The operation was approved by the North Atlantic Council and involved warships primarily from the United States though vessels from many other nations were also included. Operation Ocean Shield focused on protecting the ships of Operation Allied Provider which were distributing aid as part of the World Food Program mission in Somalia. During the Libyan Civil War, violence between protesters and the Libyan government under Colonel Muammar Gaddafi escalated, and on March 17, 2011 led to the passage of United Nations Security Council Resolution 1973 which called for a ceasefire, and authorized military action to protect civilians. A coalition that included several NATO members began enforcing a no-fly zone over Libya shortly afterwards, beginning with Operation Harmattan by the French Air Force on 19 March. On March 20, 2011, NATO states agreed on enforcing an arms embargo against Libya with Operation Unified Protector using ships from NATO Standing Maritime Group 1 and Standing Mine Countermeasures Group 1, and additional ships and submarines from NATO members. They would monitor, report and, if needed, interdict vessels suspected of carrying illegal arms or mercenaries. On 24 March, NATO agreed to take control of the no-fly zone from the initial coalition, while command of targeting ground units remained with the coalition's forces. NATO began officially enforcing the UN resolution on March 27, 2011 with assistance from Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. By June, reports of divisions within the alliance surfaced as only eight of the 28 member nations were participating in combat operations, resulting in a confrontation between U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates and countries such as Poland, Spain, the Netherlands, Turkey, and Germany with Gates calling on the latter to contribute more and the latter believing the organization has overstepped its mandate in the conflict. In his final policy speech in Brussels on 10 June, Gates further criticized allied countries in suggesting their actions could cause the demise of NATO. The German Foreign Ministry pointed to a considerable, German, contribution to NATO and NATO-led operations and to the fact that this engagement was highly valued by President Obama. While the mission was extended into September, Norway that day announced it would begin scaling down contributions and complete withdrawal by 1st of August. Earlier that week it was reported Danish air fighters were running out of bombs. NATO has 30 members, mainly in Europe and North America. Some of these countries also have territory on multiple continents, which can be covered only as far south as the Tropic of Cancer in the Atlantic Ocean, which defines NATO's area of responsibility under Article 6 of the North Atlantic Treaty. During the original treaty negotiations, the United States insisted that colonies such as the Belgian Congo be excluded from the treaty. French Algeria was, however, covered until their independence on July 3, 1962. Twelve of these 30 are original members who joined in 1949, while the other 18 joined in one of eight enlargement rounds. Few members spend more than 2% of their gross domestic product on defense, with the United States accounting for three-quarters of NATO defense spending. The three Nordic countries which joined NATO as founding members, Denmark, Iceland, and Norway, chose to limit their participation in three areas. There would be no permanent peacetime bases, no nuclear warheads and no allied military activity permitted on their territory. However, Denmark allowed the U.S. Air Force to maintain an existing base, Thule Air Base, in Greenland. From the mid-1960s to the mid-1990s, France pursued a military strategy of independence from NATO under a policy dubbed gallo mitterrandism Nicolas Sarkozy negotiated the return of France to the Integrated Military Command and the Defense Planning Committee in 2009, the latter being disbanded the following year. France remains the only NATO member outside the nuclear planning group and unlike the United States and the United Kingdom will not commit its nuclear armed submarines to the alliance. Accession to the alliance is governed with individual membership action plans, and requires approval by each current member. NATO currently has three candidate countries that are in the process of joining the alliance, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Finland, and Sweden. North Macedonia is the most recent state to sign an accession protocol to become a NATO member state, which it did in February 2019 and became a member state on March 27, 2020. Its accession had been blocked by Greece for many years due to the Macedonia naming dispute, which was resolved in 2018 by the Prespa Agreement. In order to support each other in the process, new and potential members in the region formed the Adriatic Charter in 2003. Georgia was also named as an aspiring member, 
and was promised future membership during the 2008 summit in Bucharest, though in 2014, U.S. President Barack Obama said the country was not currently on a path to membership. Ukraine's relationship with NATO and Europe has been politically controversial, and improvement of these relations was one of the goals of the Euromaidan protests that saw the ousting of pro-Russian President Viktor Yanukovych in 2014. Ukraine is one of eight countries in Eastern Europe with an individual partnership action plan. IPOPs began in 2002, and are open to countries that have the political will and ability to deepen their relationship with NATO. On February 21, 2019, the Constitution of Ukraine was amended. The norms on the strategic course of Ukraine for membership in the European Union and NATO are enshrined in the preamble of the Basic Law, three articles and transitional provisions. At the June 2021 Brussels summit, NATO leaders reiterated the decision taken at the 2008 Bucharest summit that Ukraine would become a member of the alliance with the Membership Action Plan as an integral part of the process and Ukraine's right to determine its own future and foreign policy course without outside interference. On 30 November 2021, Russian President Vladimir Putin stated that an expansion of NATO's presence in Ukraine, especially the deployment of any long-range missiles capable of striking Russian cities or missile defense systems similar to those in Romania and Poland, would be a red-line issue for Russia. Putin asked U.S. President Joe Biden for legal guarantees that NATO would not expand eastward or put weapons systems that threaten us in close vicinity to Russian territory. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg replied that it's only Ukraine and 30 NATO allies that decide when Ukraine is ready to join NATO. On 5 July, the 30 NATO ambassadors signed off on the accession protocols for Sweden and Finland and formally approved the decisions of the NATO summit on 28 June. The increase in the number of NATO members over the years hasn't been sustained by an increase in the defense expenditures. Being concerned about the decreasing defense budgets and aiming to improve financial equity commitments and boost the effectiveness of financial expenditure, NATO members met at the 2014 Wales Summit to establish the Defense Investment Pledge. Members considered it necessary to contribute at least 2% of their gross domestic product to defense and 20% of their defense budget to major equipment which includes allocations to defense research and development by 2024. The implementation of the Defense Investment Pledge is hindered by the lack of legal binding obligation by the members, European Union fiscal laws, member states' domestic public expenditure priorities, and political willingness. In 2021, eight member states achieved the goal of 2% GDP contribution to defense spending. In 2020, 18 NATO members were able to reach the target of 20% contribution to major equipment. The improvements in the compliance with the Wales recommendations are facilitated by the increasing risk to the security of the members posed by the Russian Federation. The Partnership for Peace program was established in 1994 and is based on individual bilateral relations between each partner country and NATO. Each country may choose the extent of its participation. Members include all current and former members of the Commonwealth of Independent States. The Euro-Atlantic Partnership Council was first established on May 29, 1997, and is a forum for regular coordination, consultation and dialogue between all 50 participants. The PFP program is considered the operational wing of the Euro-Atlantic Partnership. Other third countries also have been contacted for participation in some activities of the PFP framework such as Afghanistan. The European Union signed a comprehensive package of arrangements with NATO under the Berlin Plus Agreement on December 16, 2002. With this agreement, the EU was given the possibility of using NATO assets in case it wanted to act independently in an international crisis, on the condition that NATO itself did not want to act, the so-called right of first refusal. For example, Article 42 of the 1982 Treaty of Lisbon specifies that if a member state is the victim of armed aggression on its territory, the other member states shall have towards it an obligation of aid and assistance by all the means in their power. The treaty applies globally to specified territories whereas NATO is restricted under its Article 6 to operations north of the Tropic of Cancer. It provides a double framework for the EU countries that are also linked with the PFP program. Additionally, NATO cooperates and discusses its activities with numerous other non-NATO members. The Mediterranean Dialogue was established in 1994 to coordinate in a similar way with Israel and countries in North Africa. The Istanbul Cooperation Initiative was announced in 2004 as a dialogue forum for the Middle East along the same lines as the Mediterranean Dialogue. The four participants are also linked through the Gulf Cooperation Council. In June 2018, Qatar expressed its wish to join NATO. However, NATO declined membership, stating that only additional European countries could join according to Article 10 of NATO's founding treaty. Qatar and NATO have previously signed a security agreement together in January 2018. Colombia is NATO's latest partner and Colombia has access to the full range of cooperative activities NATO offers to partners. Colombia became the first and only Latin American country to cooperate with NATO. 
AUKUS ANSA's Collective Security Treaty Organization 5 Power Defense Arrangements Inter-American Treaty of Reciprocal Assistance Islamic Military Counter-Terrorism Coalition Middle East Treaty Organization Northeast Asia Treaty Organization Shanghai Cooperation Organization South Atlantic Peace and Cooperation Zone Southeast Asia Treaty Organization